Good morning. It is good to see you all here this morning, but the empty spaces in the pew remind me of our brethren who are still traveling, who are out of town, so please remember them in your prayers. I know that uh, the Atkins and, and Brother Jerry DeLott are, are traveling uh, as well, so remember them in your prayers. I know there are many others, and I probably uh, should have just stuck with that instead of mentioning some, and then now I've left some out, but you know, uh, to, to err is human, right? So <laughs> uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually, I guess it was about three weeks ago, I went with Amanda to Longhorn Steakhouse. I love Longhorn Steakhouse because I like meat. I'm sorry if you don't, but I do. Uh, and and uh, while I was there, I look over and I see Brother Roberto is there. Roberto Benitez and Sister Elba are there. And, and uh uh, so we, we talked for a minute or two, and then I went back to my table at 8 because they had already ordered, so we didn't, we didn't uh, move our, our tables together. But we ate, and I found out the following Wednesday, Brother Roberto comes up to me. He says uh, to me, he says, I, 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 I had an incident at the restaurant. I said, what happened? He said, I tried to pay for your food, and it didn't work. He said, I told the waitress, I said, the guy with the beard, the red beard over there, that's the guy, I want to pay for his food. And then whenever I got up and left, he said, wait a minute, James wouldn't have left without telling me thank you. He would have come over and said, thank you for paying for my food. I wonder if that waitress paid for the right, I paid for the right meal. So he asked and she, she says, well, it's that, that guy that's leaving right now. He said, no, 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 that guy left already. That's the wrong one. So she refunded him his money, and he had to tell me all about it. Wrong guy with a beard. <laughs> How many of you are named James? How many of you ha have the name James? There's at, least, there's at least three of us in here. There, at one time, I think there was four with Brother Jim Bacon whenever he was here. Maybe uh, even more at some time. But <clears throat> uh, just because we have the same name does not mean we're the same person. You know, if... if if, uh, if, I, if, if Amanda lost James and she was looking for him and we had to describe him, uh, you know, and she was looking for me, and we said, well, he, he has a red beard and, and he, he doesn't have much hair. He's got a little bit. Depends on what week of the month it is. And, and uh, well, he, he, he's, he's, uh, he's wearing a suit today, and he's got a, on a maroon tie that he got for Christmas. <laughs> well, you couldn't bring to him, to her, Anthony here, whose middle name is James. We have the exact same name, except for he's a third and I'm a junior. Uh, and, and she wouldn't be happy with that. Uh, she's looking for me. If you brought her, her brother Jim over here, that, that's not going to work. She's looking for me. Even though Anthony and I have almost the exact same name, that wouldn't work because it's not me. There are some distinguishing factors about our, 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 our characteristics of the Lord's church that make it the Lord's church. Where it was established, when it was established, the name by which... It is referred. There's so many distinguishing factors about the Lord's church that the Bible teaches us that rule out a lot of religious groups today. There are a lot of people in this world that believe in Jesus. There are a lot of people outside of the Lord's church who believe that Jesus is the Son of God, who may even call Him Lord. But Jesus in Matthew chapter 7 said, it takes a little more than just calling me Lord, Lord. We have to do the will of the Father. We have to belong to, to the, the body that, that Jesus gave His life for. I give you an example. I, I was talking to some friends recently that left the denomination that they belonged to to go to another one. 
I hope to be able to study with them, but it's not looking good there. But they left and asked, well, why did you leave? I said, well, because the, 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 the pastor there, um, he, he, he completely runs the show. And it, it's become a show over the years. That was another thing they mentioned. It was just, it was, it's become a, a big entertainment show. And they said, and, and he's, he's planning to retire soon. And, and his son will take over after him. He's passing it down to his, his, his son. And I said, well, you know, the church, that's another distinguishing factor about the church. The church's organization is spiritual, not earthly. I want to share with you quite a few distinguishing factors about the Lord's church. And, and the Bible actually makes a difference between the church as a whole, you might say universal, a ch- the church as a whole, the Lord's church, and then individual congregations. And we'll look at some of those in the coming weeks as well. But let's look at the church as a whole today. The word, the Greek word from which we get the English word church is ekklesia. And it simply means an assembly. And in the New Testament, we see it used in a number of different ways. But it's often and most often used referring to the church as a whole. The, a company of, uh, of souls redeemed by the blood of Christ, and then also as a local congregations. Local congregations like we saw, or that we see with, with Paul's epistles. Uh, or to, as we saw whenever uh, John is given his letter, uh, or given his, his visions, and he writes in the book of Revelation to the seven churches in Asia. We're talking about local congregations there. And our understanding of the difference between these two uh, can, can, can make a big difference. So let's look, at, let's look first at the Lord's church as a whole. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. There's lots of wonderful things to learn about the Lord's church here in Scripture. And, and this is really the first time we hear Jesus speaking about it in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. I want to back up because here um, in verse 13, Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi and his he asked his disciples a question, who do men say who do people say that the son of man is and they said well some say john the baptist others elijah or others jeremiah or one of the prophets and he said to them but who do you say that i am and simon peter as always first one to speak (laughs) simon's always i think even sometimes they probably waited for simon to go ahead and, and, and speak and he says you are the christ the son of of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah. That, that, that uh, prefix there, Bar, simply means son of. Son of Jonah. Okay. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. What was revealed by the Father in heaven? That Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he says, And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and <coughs> excuse me, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you, have, whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Notice that what is stated here, Jesus' um, church... It's composed of, of Christians. It's made up of His believers. And there in verse 18, it says, I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail 
against it. And the, 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 the Greek word here uh, is, is Hades, uh, realm of the dead. Death then shall not prevail. Death cannot hold back the church. And what we would see with Jesus is that death could not hold back Christ from His resurrection. And because He did that, the church has hope and a promise that it too will be resurrected in the day of judgment. So death cannot hold back Christians. So the first thing we see, the church is composed of Christians. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 22 through 24, Hebrews 12, 22 through 24, we see that just because I die doesn't mean that I'm not, not a, a Christian anymore. And that, that's a beautiful thing because now I'm, 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 I'm with Christ. It says there in verse 22, But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to the, inner, uh, the innumerable angels in feastal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven and to God the judge of all, and the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus the mediator of new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. That <clears throat> even in heaven. And um, that's what I have look, to look forward to in, in, uh, in death, is spending eternity with Christ. Number two, we find in Ephesians chapter 1. Actually, the entire book of Ephesians. But we'll begin in Ephesians chapter 1. It was part of our scripture reading today. The Lord's church is one. There is one Lord's church. Uh, not thousands, but one. The Bible verifies this for us here in Ephesians chapter 1. We read there in verses 21 and 22, uh, 20, excuse me, 22 and 23. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church. That's the Father doing this to the Son. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church which is His body, the fullness of Him who filled all in all. The church is Christ's body. That's important to understand. The church is the body of Christ. The church as a whole is the body of Christ. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4, we read a moment ago in our scripture reading, there's one body and one spirit just as you were called in one hope that belongs to your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and in all. There's one church, this church as a whole, this universal church called the, the body of Christ. There is one, um, this one body is his church. The next thing we'll notice here is something that was found or that took place in Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 and 2, really, uh, beautiful uh, passages to read. I'd encourage you to do so. Then, Acts chapter 1, <coughs> the Lord ascends into heaven. This is after he had been resurrected from the dead. He spent his time with his disciples. Over 500 people have seen him alive, and now his, his disciples see him ascend into heaven. And then, chapter 2, Peter, uh, well, in chapter 1, Peter and the rest of the apostles, they are, uh, well, the beginning of chapter 2, they're, they're waiting in an upper room where Jesus told them to wait. He said, Go to Jerusalem and wait until you're endued with power from on high. And that's what they're doing here in chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared 
to them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They began to speak in other tongues and other languages, and which makes a lot of sense because there are people that have come to Jerusalem to worship God from all kinds of nations. And they're, they're listed there in chapter 2. This would have made it easier for them. And there, there are going to be people there that day are saying, oh, they're drunk. And then others are saying, no, they're speaking my language. Something's taking place here. Something marvelous is taking place here. But look with me. Peter and the rest of the apostles, they, they, they're, they're preaching a message of Christ. And they begin there in verse 14. And, and, and Peter goes back to Isaiah and to Joel. And he brings up these prophecies about Jesus. And he says, here, look, they're connected. He's preaching a sermon to them about how Jesus fulfilled these prophecies. And how he was the Son of God, and they crucified him. And I don't know how many were there. Some estimate as many as a million people had come to Jerusalem for Pentecost. I don't know how many heard them preach this message that day. I do know that whenever I get over to verse 37, some of them asked the question, what do we do? And they were told in verse 38, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 41. So those who received His word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. Verse 47 says, Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church day by day those who were being saved the church remember back in matthew chapter 16 jesus told peter and the apostle i'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom go wait in jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high holy spirit now they are preaching a message given to them from god People obeyed that message, and then the Lord added them to the church, the kingdom, the keys, the kingdom. The third point I want to make today is that the church began on that day of Pentecost after the resurrection of Christ. Many, many... <coughs> Uh, So-called churches begin every day in this world. They're established. And sometimes you can even see on the sign, established such and such date. Whether or not the Lord's church was established here on this day, on this first Pentecost following the resurrection or the ascension of Christ into heaven. In Acts chapter 11, verse 15, we read, and as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them just as on us at the beginning. That's Peter explaining why he, he had preached the gospel to a, a Gentile, Cornelius, and baptized him. Why? Because the Holy Spirit came on them just like on the day of Pentecost. The church began on that day. Let's go back to Acts chapter 2 again. Because I want to bring up another point here. And that point is that I can only be added to the Lord's church. And I, I, I can determine that from the Scripture here. I can't join the Lord's church. I can't request to join the church. I, I, whenever I was in... Uh, um, when I went to school to learn to be a preacher, I went to a school of preaching in, in, in Memphis, Tennessee. And while I was there, I heard a, a story from one of my classmates that just really blew my mind. He said at one point in his life, he, 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 was, uh, he belonged to a denomination and uh, he had, he had uh, moved to another area. And so he wanted to join that denomination in this new town. And, and 
whenever he requested that, uh, it was announced to the congregation that he wanted to, that John wanted to, to join the church here. And can we get a show of hands who, who, who think that's okay? Or, or who would like to have John here? They took a vote on whether or not he could become part of their congregation. And that wasn't the, that's not the only time I've heard that story. I know there are, this takes place in some denominations. In Acts chapter 2, verse 41, I read it a moment ago. It, it said there that they received His Word. Those who received the words that were preached that day about Jesus. And also remember the question, what do we do? And then they were told, repent and be baptized, every one of you. Those who received His words... What did they do? Where they were baptized. Is there any doubt as to which words they received? <laughs> if he said, repent and be baptized, and then the text tells us, they, so they received his word and were baptized. They believed what he was teaching. And they obeyed. And verse 47 tells us what? praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church those who were being saved. The Lord added them. It wasn't that it's not a club that I can join. When I obey God's Word as these people did, the Lord adds me not to a, an earthly group, but to His church and that's a distinctive quality about the lord's church as a whole number next five i think <laughs> the lord keeps the books the lord keeps the books of the membership hebrews chapter 12 verse 23 I read a moment ago, but I'll read this verse one more time. And to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. Enrolled in heaven. Yes, we have a directory. We have a directory. And I've, I've, uh, I've, I've heard stories about, you know, uh, in times past where... There were church splits over and fights over who got to be in the directory. Oh, they're, they're not a member of the church. They, they don't need to be in the directory. <laughs> and I'm just thinking, brethren, the directory doesn't mean whether or not you're saved. It just has your contact information in it, all right? The role that matters is in heaven. It's in heaven. The assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, the Lamb's book of life. That's where I want my name and where it is. And to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, Paul would write to Timothy. He would say, But God, but God's firm found, <coughs> excuse me, foundation stands, bearing the seal, this seal. The Lord knows who are His. Let everyone whose name's the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. The Lord knows who are His. doesn't matter. There can't be a vote taken as to whether or not I get to be enrolled. There's no one keeping the books as to whether or not I can be part of the Lord's church. Number next, number six. I'm, I'm struggling with this because I have letters, not numbers. Letter F, all right? <laughs> the next one is the Lord's church, the body of Christ consists of, is made up of the saved. Turn with me in your Bibles to Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. Look at verses 24. No, 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 no. Uh, 25 and 26, 27. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church 
and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she may be holy and without blemish. The church consists of the saved. The Lord is presenting to Himself a church holy without blemish. And those who continue to, to walk in sin are not walking in the light. In John, John chapter 15, verse 2, Jesus said, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, He takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, He prunes, but that He may bear more fruit. Paul would write to the Romans in Romans chapter 11, beginning at verse 19, Then what you will say, Branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. That is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief. But you stand fast through faith, so do not become proud, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, that's the Jews, by the way, the natural branches, neither will He spare you. Note then the kindness and severity of God, severity toward those who have fallen, but God's kindness to you, providing you, you continue in His kindness. Otherwise, you too will be what? Cut off. If I want to belong to, if I belong to the body of Christ, then I need to live like it, because the body of Christ is the saved. Revelation chapter three verse sixteen. So, because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. That was Christ's message to the church in Laodicea. Letter G. The church. Well, this one goes with the previous point. Look at verse 23 of Ephesians 5. We read <coughs> 25 through 26. Read with me in 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Is itself its Savior. Now, if Christ is the Savior of the body, where are the saved? The saved are in the body. Where are the saved only? In the body. I, I, I've, I've tried uh, uh, studying this with, with some friends and even those who believe in the Bible who are convinced that they don't need to become, belong to the church in order to be pleasing to God, to be saved. But here Paul says that Jesus is the Savior of the body of Christ. Jesus is the Savior of the church. I need to be in the church then to be saved. Not this building, but the body of Christ. And we've talked about how that takes place in Acts chapter 2. Those individuals, when they asked, they were told, repent of your sins and be baptized into Christ for the remission of your sins. Now, um, in Ephesians chapter 18, not Ephesians, excuse me, Acts <laughs> chapter 19, um, I hear some of you turning there. You can make some notes about it. I'm not going there. Uh, I'm just going to talk about it. <laughs> Acts chapter 19. There were some brethren there, or there were some, some, some folks there who had, had been baptized according to John's baptism after the cross. 
You see, John's baptism was for before the cross. After the cross, people were baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of their sins, and they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so whenever, whenever Paul came there and asked them, you know, what, you know, whose name were you baptized? And they said, according to John's baptism, you know what he did? He baptized them again. In the name of Christ. I, I bring that up because I want to point out to you that it's possible to be immersed in water for the wrong reason or incorrectly. They were. And they were baptized again in the name of Christ. You say, well, I was baptized in the name of Christ. It's still possible for me to have done it wrong yes if i've not done it according to what scripture teaches then yes it's possible and that's something to think about because i want to be in the body of christ i want to be part of this that jesus gave his life to save h the church has no earthly organization the church's organization is spiritual. Look at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Look at verse 19 with me. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus Himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In Him you also are being built up together in a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Uh, you, you, some of you may remember one time that, that uh, Brother Wade Webster uh, preached a gospel meeting for us, and while he was here, he used an illustration from his own life. And I'll share it with you now for those of you that didn't hear it. He said at one congregation where he preached uh, early on in his ministry, that it, they, they didn't have elders. And, and so the, the, the men of the congregation got together for meetings, and, and he brought up the fact that, uh, Wade did uh, that there were some, some brethren that were, were uh, continuing in sin and it needed to be addressed according to Scripture. This is what needed to be done. And they, they kind of him hauled about it and they're, okay, okay. Finally, he pressed it, the point enough and he thought, okay, well, we're going to, we're going to go forward and, and we're going to do something. We're going to talk to these brethren. We're going to do something. And, and, and so the men then began to vote on whether or not they would obey the Bible. Whether or not they would go and talk to these people and eventually withdraw fellowship from them for uh, continuing in sin and refusing to repent. I bring that up because <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's an earthly way of thinking, is it not? That's an earthly way of thinking. And the church is not organized in an earthly way. It is organized according to God. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, it says, You yourselves like living stones are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You know, things, some of these things might work for, for businesses and other organizations, but do we really think we know better than God? God knows what He's doing. The nature of the church is spiritual. Christ is the cornerstone and together with His apostles and prophets as the foundation and all Christians are these living stones. There's no earthly headquarters for the, the church. There's no telephone number that you can get and, and call them up and speak to the head of the church. Why? Because all I need to do, uh, I, 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 what I know here, Ephesians chapter 1 is uh, in, in verse 23, I read it earlier, uh, 22, 
gave him to be head over all things to the church. Who's the head of the church? Jesus is the head of the church, not some man. And he's in heaven. Number next, the church cannot be divided. Um, and then this is a brief point. I'm going to move through it quickly just for sake of time. But Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4, there's one body. And in Ephesians 4, 1 through 7, the whole point is unity in the body. I, I, I can't divide the Lord's church. Even if I tried, I couldn't. Because those that would distinguish themselves in some way, whether it be doctrine or not, um, what was the statement that Jesus made to several churches in the book of Revelation? Remember the seven churches in Asia? She said, get this, and I'm paraphrasing, get this right or I'm going to come and do what? Remove my candle. What's a church without the light? It's not a church at all. The church can't be divided. And death cannot affect membership. <laughs> I love that point. Death cannot affect membership. I, I, if I, what, if, what <coughs> excuse me. In Revelation 14, beautiful statement is made. I think it's verse 17. Blessed are those who die in the Lord henceforth. Why? Because we are still enrolled in heaven. We are still part of the body of Christ. Philippians 1, 22, or 21 and 22. Uh, it says, for me to live is Christ and that to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. That 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 10 Paul again writes, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with Him. Regardless, sometimes we get afraid right, of what the future holds. Sometimes we, we get all anxious, and, and, and many of you know I, I do counseling part-time. And things have certainly changed in the last two years. The number of, of, of people with, with uh, just extreme anxieties because of everything that's going on and depression because of, of, of COVID and everything that's taking place. And, and, and brethren, whether I live or whether I die, I have a home in heaven prepared for me, John 14, 1 through 3. Uh, we need to be laying up our treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not corrupt and steal, where, thie or where thieves cannot break in and steal. You know, in our next study, we're going to look at the church in, in a more uh, local fashion, a, a the, each congregation. But I want to finish with a question for each of you. And this is, this is something you need to be thinking about that we all need to think about. Have, have you been added to the Lord's church? Not joined it, because you can't, but added to Christ's body. The body He gave His life to save. I'm so offended every time I hear people say, the church doesn't matter. And what they really mean is it doesn't matter which group you belong to. But Jesus died for the church. Died for that body. He's the Savior of that body. Well, therefore, it is of great value. So, in light of what we've seen thus far, we do well to ask ourselves, have I been added to the Lord's church? And if you're still struggling over that and what that means and, and how that's accomplished, we see in Scripture that 
Oh, well, I need to obey the gospel. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. That's the, the foundation of all of this is that Jesus was raised from the dead on the third day, proving that He was the Son of God. Proving that the sacrifice He made, John chapter 3, verse 16, was for all the world to save the lost. For those who would come to Him in obedience, believing that He's the Son of God. Just like in Acts chapter 8, when Philip came to the eunuch, he said, do you understand what you're reading? He said, how, how can I accept someone show me? So he went up into that chariot with him, Acts chapter 8, and he preached to him Christ. And the next thing we read is that when that eunuch saw some water, he said, see, here's water. What hinders me from being baptized? And Peter said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. My friend, I'll say the same thing to you today. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and you're ready, as they were in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, to repent of your sins, you too can be immersed in water, baptized for the remission of your sins, and you'll be added to the Lord's church. A new creature, Romans 6, 4 tells us, forgiven of your sins, set free from those sins, Romans chapter 6, verses 17 and 18. But brothers and sisters, we belong to the, the, the glorious body of Christ. Sometimes we don't act like it. Sometimes we, we, we get tangled up in sin, and, and I'm so very grateful for the continued forgiveness that we can receive, that we have available to us. 1 John 1, 9 tells us if we will confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. John chapter 5, verse 16, James, James chapter 5, verse 16, James would write, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another. We're here today. We want to pray for you. If there's something that you need to repent of today, or if there are some prayers that you would like to request today, whatever we can do for you, please come while we stand and sing this song that's been selected for the end.